there i am going to do a video today on astrophysics um so i'm going to make actually a series of videos of astrophysics stuff that comes to um some exams in aqa but if you even if you are just interested in astrophysics this is useful for you as well so this series of videos are going to be talking about telescopes and this stuff about telescopes classification of stars, all that stuff, and then cosmology, okay, where I talk about the Doppler effect, Hubble's law, quasars, and detection of extrasolar planets. So that's the first one. I'm going to go on telescopes and refracting telescopes. So that's the focus for today. So telescopes. I can have different types of telescopes. I can have reflecting telescopes, which are made of mirrors. I can have refracting telescopes, which are made with uses of lenses, and I can have non-optical telescopes, all right? So today, I'm, as I said, I'm going to go to the refracting telescopes. So these ones use lenses, okay? And the lenses use the process of refraction to change the direction of light. So you know already that when I have a wave, and it goes from one medium to another, so two different medium, media, uh, if one of them has a different density, then the light is going to change direction and change speed, okay? So in this case, I have light waves going through uh, the air and then they meet the lens, which is denser, and therefore the light is going to slow down inside of the lens and either converge or diverge de depending on the type of lens I have. And this is where I'm going now. So I can have converging or diverging lenses, okay? Converging lenses, they are fatter in the middle, and what they do is, because of their shape and their curvature, being fatter in the middle and thinner on the edges, they actually make that all the rays converge into a focus, okay? So that's what you see in here. On the other hand, I can have the opposite type of lens, which is the diverging lens. So in these ones, they are thinner in the middle, thicker at the edges, and again, this curvature is going to make that the rays appear to come from a focus, so they actually diverge after passing through the lens, okay? So, if I want to do a telescope, a refracting telescope, although nowadays other telescopes use different sets of lenses, I can use two converging lenses, okay? As I told you, there are some telescopes that now have a mixture uh, of lenses and mirrors or not just two converging lenses, but at the moment we are going to focus on those ones, okay? So, this simple telescope, the way that it's built is you have light coming from a source and then you have the first lens, which I'm going to call the objective lens. This lens is going to gather all the light and bend into a place of focus, all right? The focus is where the incoming light is going to all converge and meet and it's going to be quite bright in there, okay? And then I need to have another lens to make my image to be bigger. So I have the eyepiece lens, which is next to your eye or next to a screen or a photographic film if I want, okay? And what the eyepiece lens does, which is the one closer to your eyes, it brings the light, uh, the bright image, sorry, from the focus and magnifies it, okay? Now, when you're building these telescopes, if you want to make sure that your image is sharp, then the normal adjustment, so the normal way you should do it, is that the distance in between the two lenses, the eyepiece and the incoming uh, objective lens, the one that gets the incoming light, is going to be equal to the sum of the focal lens of the two of them. So, FO for the focal length of the objective lens, which is from the middle of the lens to the point where all the light rays focus, plus Fe, which is the focal length of the eyepiece lens, which comes from the middle of the eyepiece lens to the focus, so the place where the points meet, okay? You can try yourself to build a telescope, so you can use a piece of wood or ruler, uh, you can use blue tuck, you can use different lenses and see how it goes, okay? You can look at what happens, all right? So you can see if you get a sharp image or not, you will probably find the image to be upside down. In terms of astrophysics, that's not an issue for us because we can use the computers or we can use a technology to turn the image around, so to get into the actual shape that we want or in the actual direction we want in terms of being upside down or not. Or um, it could be something that I don't even care, is something that is exactly the same all over the place, okay? But we do normally do change the, 
the um, image uh, direction in case you know we want to study it better so ray diagram so how do these lenses the converged lenses work i don't think you uh need to know this but really i'm just going to tell you so you get a point for that of specific object and for all points of the object you have the same exactly diagram okay so each point of the ob object is going to give you a certain point on the image so you only need two rays but you can use three if you want to make sure that uh, your diagram is cor correctly done the first ray which is here in red grows from the top of your object goes through the middle of your lens and carries on um continuously okay until you meet another ray uh, so you just carry on passing through the middle of the lens then your second ray is going to come from the same point as before so from the top of your object it goes parallel here to the principal axis which is here in black in a dashed line okay and then from the point it meets the lens is going to curve or actually change direction still a straight line uh, into the focus and then you carry on your line okay until it meets with the first line this too will give you a position of the image but again you can use the last ray just to confirm everything so that last ray comes from the same point as before so in this case here the top of my object it goes through the focal point of the lens because the lens has a focal point at the same distance before and after the lens okay goes through the focal point up to the middle of the lens from that point it goes parallel to the principal axis if your diagram is correctly done all the points converge in the same place okay so this is how you do a ray diagram for a converging lens now if you want to make sure that you get a sharp image you need to follow the lens equation so if you want to focus an image by a converging lens or using a converging lens and you want it into a screen or a photographic film then the distances in between the object and the lens and the lens in the image they must follow an equation known as the lens equation which is this one here on top that equation says that one over u where u is the distance in between the object and the center of the lens plus 1 over v where v is the distance in between the center of the lens to the place where the image is being formed equals 1 over f where f is going to be the distance in between the center of the lens to the focal point okay so this is the focal length when you're using this equation uh, make sure that u and v and if whatever you want to find out they have the same units so if you're doing in meters keep using meters if you're doing in centimeters again keep using centimeters because if you mix meters with centimeters you will obviously get the wrong result okay so that's the lens equation really useful it tells you where you either put the screen or the object or whatever you want to make sure that you have a sharp image okay now you may also want to know how much bigger your image became and that's your magnification so magnification is m and is equal to fo over fe fo stands for the objective's focal length in this case it's meters but whatever you use just use it as, as well for the other part of the equation okay so for the lower part fe is going to be the eyepiece focal length so again here i'm using meters in meters meters cancel out with meters magnification has no units okay um objective is the one that is closer to the object eyepiece is the lens that is closer to your eye or the screen okay and this formula is accurate for an object at infinity so i can approximate the calculations and this is going to work fine for an object that is an infinity okay so here in this diagram i have the focal length of the objective so light is coming from this direction this is my objective lens focal length of the objective from the middle of the lens to the place where the all the rays focus together and then here the focal length of the eyepiece so the distance in between the place where all the rays meet together up to the middle of the eyepiece lens okay very simple stuff now i'm going to show you the proof that magnification is focal length of the objective over the focal length of the eyepiece okay so let's imagine here i have 
h1 which is going to be the height of my image okay and i have here the focal length of the eyepiece i have here the focal length of the objective so there's one lens in here another lens i have here the angle alpha and the angle beta okay and i'm getting the light from a distance object so from the diagram i know that the tangent of alpha equals the height over the focal length of the objective and the tangent of beta is going to be the height over the focal length of the eyepiece so if i combine the two equations together i can say that the tangent of alpha over the tangent of beta equals the focal length of the eyepiece over the focal length of the objective lens okay now these angles are tiny angles because i am talking about objects there are many many millions of kilometers some not always millions but you know what i mean uh quite far away from us okay so very distant objects so these angles are less than about 10 degrees so i can make an angle approximation and say that tangent of alpha equals to alpha and tangent of beta equals to beta okay uh, so that means that alpha over beta is going to be focal length of the eyepiece over the focal length of the objective which gives me one over m the magnification okay so therefore beta over alpha equals focal length of the objective over the focal length of the eyepiece which gives me f the magnification i can also have angular magnification so the angular magnification is going to be an indication of how wildly an image is spread over our field of vision okay so it has to do with angles instead of lens so when an object is closer to you it's going to feel more of your field of vision when it's further away it feels in less space so it takes up less angles or less degrees or radians if you want okay so an image with a higher angular magnification seems to be closer so the formula is going to be m for magnification equals theta, uh, uh, theta i which theta is going to be our or i is going to be for the angle by the eyepiece or um uh, from the image so i'll show you in a second and theta zero or o is going to be the angle from the eye by the object so this is what i have i have my image here closer magnified i have here my object so the angle that my object is taking over my field of view is going to be theta o okay and then the angle that my image is taking on my field of vision is going to be theta i so i just do the ratio of the two of them one over the other and i get the magnification now a problem with refracting telescopes is that they suffer of this thing called chromatic aberration so chromatic comes from colors so what happens is all colors they have different wavelengths and therefore if you know about the, enough about refraction you know that depending on the wavelength of light um, the waves are going to refract more or less so they are going to bend more or less so blue light is refracted more than red light so that means that when I have lights of all colors coming from a star or a galaxy, once they meet the lens and they focus into a point, blue color here is going to have a focal length that is shorter because it's refracted the most, then the green color, and then the red color, which is the one that is refracted the least, meaning that the focal point is further away. So although I can have a perfect telescope, I am getting lights that is from different colors made of different colors and all of these will be separated when they pass through a lens because they will have different focal lenses okay uh, focal lens sorry not lenses so for certain focal length the longer uh, is going to be for the red light and the shorter for the blue light so i will have kind of a blur of colors so in general the focal length of a lens is slightly different for different wavelengths so any device that uses lenses such a refracting telescope suffers from this uh, distortion which is called chromatic aberration and here is an example okay i have my pony in here all happy is all good within the pony but when you get to the edges you can definitely see different colors as if they are separated okay and this is because the blue the red and in this case the yellow 
they are separated because they have different focal lengths, okay? They have different wavelengths, therefore they refract differently. So this is a problem for all telescopes. It doesn't matter, all refracting telescopes, sorry. So all telescopes that use lenses, it doesn't matter how perfect everything else is, okay? So, advantages and disadvantages of the refracting telescope, to summarize everything. So, the optical system is more resistant to misalignment than the uh, reflector telescope, which is the one that uses mirrors. So, that's good. The glass surface inside the tube is sealed from the atmosphere, so it doesn't need cleaning very often. That's good as well, because just a little bit of dust can ruin my image. Since the tube is closed, from the outside, the air currents and effects due to the changing in temperature are also not happening, so they are eliminated, okay? This means that the images are more steady and they are sharper than those from a reflector, which is using mirrors, uh, and I'm saying a reflector, re reflector sorry, of the same size, okay? You will see that in telescopes, the size of the lens or the mirrors is going to make a difference. And then, this is actually a disadvantage. Though excellent refractors are still made, the disadvantage of the refractor is that they block the construction of very large refractors for use in astronomical research, okay? So they are still being made, but they are quite big, okay? They need to be quite big. Now, disadvantages. They all suffer from this chromatic aberration that I just told you about. I can reduce it, so I can use multiple compensa uh, compensating lenses to counteract the chromatic aberration, okay? The other way is by using a very long objective focal lens to minimize the effects, okay? Now, this makes that the refracting telescopes become quite long, which is not an advantage in case you want to save some space, okay? So the old telescopes, the older ones, early ones, they were quite long. Nowadays, we have other ways around it, and you will be able to see them, okay? Ultraviolet light does not pass through the lens at all. So because it doesn't pass through the lens at all, there are certain points or certain parts of whatever object that you're studying that you not, cannot get information from. And as you will see later on, it is good to have information of all different wavelengths because they are going to give us different pieces of information, okay? So they are going to tell us different things about whichever object we are looking at. How well the light passes through decreases with the, as the thickness of the lens increases. So a thicker lens is going to give me more power, which means that the focal length is closer to the lens. But because it gives me more power uh, and it's thicker, it means that then the light passing through is going to be a little bit more difficult, okay? So you kind of need to find the optimal uh, ratio there. It is difficult to make glass lens with no imperfections and make the inside of the, in the, inside of the lens and then to have a perfect curvature in both sides, okay? This is very difficult. You need to be very, very precise when you're doing that. So that's a disadvantage, okay? And finally, the last disadvantage is that the objective lens can be supported only at the ends. So the glass will sag under on, uh, its own weight. So you have a limitation about the size of the objective lens because of this as well, okay? So you have a limitation on the quality of the images overall as well, all right? So that's all on the refracting telescopes. Keep tuned to get about uh, to know about more telescopes and more on astrophysics and I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.